In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to use Streamlit to create a web app that connects to a Snowflake database, loads the data, and displays it all in a few lines of code. You can take this minimum viable data app and extend it to perform complex data analysis and visualization to your heart's content. If this sounds like fun, then buckle up and let's get started with the tutorial. Streamlit is a low-code web framework for the Python programming language. It allows you to build an interactive web application with minimal coding. Let's take a look at the conceptual overview of this tutorial. We'll start by coding the app using Streamlit in Python. Then, we're going to access and load data from the Snowflake database. Finally, we'll write the data out to the Streamlit app. Let's take a preview of the Streamlit app that we'll be building today. Particularly, we'll learn how to connect our Streamlit app to a Snowflake database. After a connection is established, we'll load in the data table from Snowflake. And finally, we'll write out the data along with emojis. Before proceeding to creating a database in Snowflake, you'll want to create an account, and the links will be provided in the video description and also displayed on screen. After signing up for an account, check your email for the Welcome to Snowflake message. Inside, you'll find your account URL that you could use to connect to your Snowflake account. You could also click on the Login to Snowflake button. On the login screen, go ahead and put in your username and password. After logging in, you'll be taken to the Worksheets tab of your account. On the top right-hand corner, you'll notice a blue button with a plus sign. Then go ahead and click on the SQL Worksheet option. This is the SQL Editor, and you want to enter your SQL Query into the text box. And the SQL Query to enter will be provided in the recent blog shown here, and links to this blog will be provided in the video description. So scroll down until you find the code to copy, then hover back to the SQL editor and then paste it in the provided text box. Then you want to select all of the code and then hit on the play button at the top right hand corner. And then immediately you'll notice the data table displayed at the bottom here. So congratulations, you've created your database in Snowflake. Going to the data tab in your menu also confirms this and this is the pets data table that was just created. Setting up your coding environment. To create a new environment, enter the following into the command line, which is conda create dash n snowpark and it is worthy to note here that snowpark is the name of the conda environment and then we want to specify python equals 3.8 after a few moments you'll notice that the conda environment will ask for your permission to proceed further and you'll notice that the new environment has been created at the bottom here you'll notice that it provides you with instructions on how you could activate and also deactivate the coding environment notice here at the bottom part to the left of your username, you'll see the name of the base environment, which means that we are in the base environment and not yet in any of the conda environment. And here, we're going to activate the snowpark conda environment. Go ahead and enter conda activate snowpark. And then you'll notice here that on the left here, you'll see snowpark in the parenthesis, which means that you are currently in the snowflake conda environment. Now, we want to go ahead and install the prerequisite Python libraries, which includes the Snowflake Snowpark Python library and also the Streamlit library. Give it some time and installation is complete. Now, let's exit from your coding environment and we could do that by entering conda deactivate. And here, you'll notice that the name to the left of your username has been changed back to base instead of snowpark, which means that you have successfully exited the snowpark conda environment and you are currently in the base environment. Let's proceed to creating the necessary directories and files to house your Streamlit app. Firstly, before doing anything, it's always nice to know where you are in terms of the path of your current working directory. And you could figure that out by using the pwd command. Initially, we're at the users 
slash channel folder. And now we're going to go to the typical working directory, which is documents slash sandbox. Please make note here that these are working directories that I typically use. So feel free to modify this to your own preference. Next, we're going to create a directory called snowflake-first-app in order to house the Streamlit app that we're building today. Now we're going to change into the newly created directory by entering cd snowflake dash first dash app entering the pwd command reveals the updated path now to create a streamlit app.py file we're going to use the touch command and this will allow us to create an empty file next we're going to create the secrets.toml file which will reside in the streamlit folder so firstly, we'll create a directory for .streamlit. Then we'll create the .streamlit slash secrets.toml file. Let's now take a look at the contents of the current directory. And you could do that using the ls command. But notice here that we only see the streamlit app.py file, but however, we don't see the .streamlit folder. And it is because .streamlit is a hidden directory. To fix this, we're going to use the dash A option, which will allow us to see also the hidden folders. And using the dash L option, it allows us to see additional information about the files, such as the read write permission, the file size, and also the file creation date. Remember the empty streamlit app.py file that we've created in an earlier section? Well, now in this section, we're going to populate that with the app content. So first, we want to edit the file. So go ahead and enter vi followed by streamlit app.py. And this is the Vim editor, which allows us to edit text and code. Once inside the file, you want to first hit on the I key in order to allow you to insert content into the file. And then you'll notice that at the bottom left, you're going to see the insert status, which tells you that you're ready to insert content. Now hover back to the blog and then copy the code of the Streamlit app. Now go back and paste the code into the file and then to save and exit, you want to press on the colon key followed by entering W Q exclamation mark, which essentially means to write and quit and confirm. And then you'll notice that you'll be taken back to the command line. To make sure that the contents has been pasted in properly, let's take a preview of the file content by using the cat command, followed by the name of the file, which is streamletapp.py. And now we're going to add the Snowflake account credentials into the secrets file. So go ahead and enter vi space dot streamlet slash secrets dot toml. In the file, you want to add open bracket snowflake close bracket followed by the user, password, and account information. In a few moments, I'm going to show you how you could get the account value which was sent to you in your welcome to snowflake email. Let's now save and exit using colon wq exclamation mark. Hit on enter. So in your welcome to snowflake email, you'll notice that there's the account URL which starts from https colon slash slash and then the subdomain name. So the subdomain name here is the account value that you will put in the secrets file. And the subdomain is the value here after the slash but before the dot snowflake computing dot com. And now it's the moment that we're waiting for. Let's go ahead and launch the Streamlit app. Type streamlet run streamlet app.py. Hit on enter. And the command line will print out the URL of your streamlet app, which in our case will be located locally at localhost colon 8503. And this is followed by the launching of an internet browser containing the streamlet app. So this is the title of the Streamlit app. And you can see here that initially the app will connect to the Snowflake database and the data table will be displayed in the C table expander box, followed by the text output along with the emojis. So a quick shout out to Streamlit's product manager, Johannes Wright, for creating the initial version of this code. And as always, the code will start by importing the necessary libraries. And here we have Streamlit SST, 
and we're going to import session from snowflake.snowpark. On line number six, we're going to print out the title of the app using st.title as shown here on the right. In this code block, we're going to create a custom function in order to establish a Snowflake session. Then we're going to catch the session using Streamless catching mechanism. After a successful session has been established, we're going to print it out using st.success, shown here on the right as a connected to Snowflake with a inside a green box. In this custom function, we're going to load in data from the Snowflake database. Then we're going to use st.catch data on the retrieved data and the data will be placed in a data frame and the data frame will be inside an expander box by using the st.expander function and finally we're going to write the data out row by row using a for loop and notice here that we're using an f string inside st.write in order to combine static text with dynamic values from columns one and two of the data table and make note here that the second column will be written out as emojis in summary this tutorial has shown you how to connect your streamlit app to a snowflake database in a few lines of code Particularly, you've learned how to create a Snowflake database, create a coding environment, set up directories and files, build the Streamlit app, secrets management, and how to launch the app. Congratulations, you've made it through until the end of the video. And if you would like to put all of that newfound knowledge to practical use and practice, then the Streamlit Hackathon for Snowflake Summit might be interesting to you. Three lucky winners will be selected in May for a free trip to Las Vegas for the Snowflake Summit. And you also have a chance to dine with the Streamlit founders. If this sounds like fun, you can check the video description for submission deadline and instructions for joining the Streamlit Hackathon for Snowflake Summit. You could still join in on the fun by building the Streamlit app and tagging us on social media, on Twitter, and also on LinkedIn. Needless to say, current participants are encouraged to also do the same.